Hey, welcome to Robinson Foundry. In today's video, I'll be making this really interesting puzzle using three different types of metal. I knew that this would be a really challenging project as there are several different pieces and I wanted to make them using copper, bronze, and aluminum. I decided that the best way to make these puzzle pieces was to cast them in ceramic shell. And to do that, the first step was to 3D print them. Polymaker sent me this polycast filament to try out. What's unique about it is that it can be burned away without leaving any ash behind. It can also be alcohol vapor smooth, which means that if you stick the prints in a container filled with alcohol vapor, the alcohol will collect on the surface and melt the outer layer which smooths the layer lines. Before I attempted to smooth the prints with alcohol, I sanded them down in an attempt to remove some of the layer lines. Polymaker also sent me this Polysure machine. It produces a very fine mist of alcohol vapor and evenly coats 3D prints. I left the prints in the machine for 20 minutes and then checked them. The alcohol did do a really good job at smoothing out the layer lines. You can see that the prints came out nice and shiny. In order to cast these pieces in metal, I needed to make something called a pattern tree. A pattern tree consists of a sprue to pour the metal into, runners for the metal to flow through into the castings, and in this case, risers, which supply the castings with metal as they solidify and shrink. I dipped the 3D prints in a special liquid ceramic called Suspend Slurry. After each coat, I sprinkled on some silica sand which helped build up a thick shell. Each one was coated about 9 times over the course of a week and then left to dry for several days. I put the ceramic shells into the kiln to burn out the plastic and vitrify them. First, I warmed up the kiln to about 600 degrees Fahrenheit, which is roughly the temperature that the polycast filament should melt out of the shells. When I thought that the majority of the plastic had melted out of the shells, I opened up the kiln and removed most of it. As I was removing the shells, I accidentally dropped one and cracked it. This was really disappointing, but I decided to just go ahead and try to cast it and see what would happen. This filament behaved a little differently than what I'm used to. It didn't flow as easily as PLA does, so I ended up having to use tongs to pull some of it out. I placed the shells back into the kiln and then turned up the temperature to around 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. This vitrified the shells, turning them into a ceramic that can withstand the temperature of molten metal. Each shell will be filled with a different metal, aluminum, copper, and bronze. This is all the metal I used. And here's my crazy dog Penny keeping me company while I work. She's a Jack Russell Terrier, and she never seems to run out of energy. The first shell I poured was bronze, and that was the cracked one. It pretty much immediately started leaking, and I thought it was a total loss. I cracked it open after I let it cool down for a few minutes, and surprisingly, it actually looked alright. 
Fortunately, the other shells weren't cracked, so I didn't have to worry about any other leaks. And just to give you an idea of how long this takes, I cast all three of these shells in one day, and it took pretty much the whole day. Before I started breaking off the shells, I submerged them in water to keep the dust from floating around. Breaking open the shells is always fun. It's exciting to see if all the hard work I put into a mold has paid off. Fortunately, these shells weren't too difficult to break off. Some shells can be extremely challenging to remove, and it can take many hours. All of these castings looked really good, so next I went to work finishing them up. I planned on using my horizontal bandsaw to remove the excess metal, but these castings were such an odd shape that by the time I figured out a way to mount them in my bandsaw, I could have just cut everything with a hacksaw, so that's what I did. I used my belt grinder to sand off the rest of the sprues and feeders, and it really made quick work of eating through the different metals. Some of the faces ground on the belt grinder weren't perfectly perpendicular, so I used the milling machine to square them up before sanding them. Sanding these pieces did take a few hours, but I just listened to some music and it wasn't too bad. The outer faces were easy to sand, but the inside faces were much more difficult to get to. So I glued some sandpaper to a piece of wood, and that ended up working extremely well. I sanded the rest off camera, and then I went to work cleaning up the chamfers. I thought that this would be the easy part, but it actually took longer than the sanding process. Each one took about 30 to 40 minutes. Putting a lot of time into finishing work on something like this is how you get really nice end results, and when you're done, it's definitely worth the time. It took me a total of about 7 hours to finish these. With all the puzzle pieces done, next I had to make a bronze base. I 3D printed a pattern and then I just made a simple sand mold. It was a lot easier to use my small electric furnace than to fire up my large propane furnace to cast such a small part.
I made the base hollow so that I wouldn't have to worry about metal shrinkage, but that meant that it was a little bit too light, so I filled the inside with pewter to make it heavier. As the pewter was melting, I ground some indentations into the base in hopes that the pewter would grab onto them and not fall out. Unfortunately, when the metal cooled, it contracted and it easily fell out, but that was easy enough to fix with a little epoxy. As a finishing touch, I stamped my channel name and year into the base. Next, I needed to make the little wooden dish that the puzzle was built on, and for that, I used walnut. The last step was to glue the walnut dish to the base, and this project was finally done. It was really satisfying to see this whole project come together. This project was especially challenging, and it took a long time to complete, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. Let me know if you have any suggestions for similar things that I could make in the future. I'm glad I used different metals because I really like the way they look when the puzzle is solved. I've solved it in as little as 2 minutes and as long as 15 minutes, which of course is when I was filming. And thank you to Polymaker for sending these items out for me to test. It was really interesting to be able to do something a little bit different, and I know a lot of my viewers have been asking about it. I think that the Polycast filament worked well, but I'm not sure that it's something that I'll be using that much, as it was a little bit more difficult for me to burn out, and I found it more challenging to print than PLA. I did notice that the molds were completely ash-free, which is never the case for PLA, so that's definitely a huge benefit. As usual, I'll include affiliate links in the description for items that I've used in this video, as well as items that I would recommend. Well, I hope you all enjoyed watching me make this, and if you did, please let me know what you think in the comments. Give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for future videos. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.